Hi, I don't know how much or how little you heard of the last video because it cut out. Um, does my phone run out of battery? Um, uh, it's a new phone and the battery life is a great. Um, so if I think it's charged 50%, it'll only take a couple of minutes to go back down to 3% and then there's a fucking mad rush on trying to get a charger into the thing. Um, as I was saying, uh, uh, yeah, Insidious was my second favourite horror movie. Um, it's a great movie. Um, there are a couple of uh, jump scares. Um, very atmospheric, very original, as I was saying. Um, uh, acting is really well done. Um, I, I don't like the other two, the second and the third one. Um, but the original one is definitely, definitely worth a watch. I don't know many people who haven't seen the original one at this stage, but um, if you haven't, it's definitely worth a watch. Um, uh, I don't remember if I've explained it, but uh, it's basically astral projection. Um, a movie about astral projection. Um, astral projection gone wrong. Uh, where it's kind of like you're, you're, when you fall asleep, your like spirit leaves your body and kind of sort of floats around the place and you can do things that you can't do in the physical world um, like fly uh, but unfortunately there are like evil spirits out there like demons who want to like possess the living so if you wander too far off into this uh, from the astral plane um, which is basically the space within how far you're kind of allowed to travel when you're astral projecting um, you run into uh, a, a kind of a landscape called the Further, which is basically just a place not meant for the living. It's uh, for the dead, and there's uh, the, it's kind of inhabited by spirits and demons and uh, ghosts and specters and stuff. Um, and they want to possess the living. And... Um, if they get too close to you, they will kind of inhabit the physical world and try and possess your body in the physical world, outside of the astral plane, outside of the further. Um, it's a very original idea. It's a great, great movie. I really, really like it. Um, yep, yeah. and the number one horror movie of all time, and the movie that still scares me, is... Uh, the Exorcist, the original 1973 William Friedkin, um, The Exorcist, um, which as far as I know was based on um, an exorcism case. Uh, a lot of movies are based on an exorcism case, uh, like The Exorcism of Emily Rose. That, that court case uh, was based on uh, a real life event that happened, uh, it could have been the in the 40s or the 50s. Um, where a, a young girl got possessed and she eventually died in the end. Um, the priests were, as far as I know, they were jailed. Um, but yeah, The Exorcist, the nineteen seventy three one, was um kind of based off that case. I'll I'll put a link in the description of what case that is. Um, so I can't remember the case or or who was in it. Um, and I was only watching it the other week. Uh. Look, 1973, when The Exorcist came out, it shocked everybody. I mean, there were people who went to see this in the cinema at the time who fainted, who uh, vomited, um, who, who fell nauseous um, because of how kind of visceral... Um, it's an emotional fucking tour de force. It's a visceral... Uh, high impact um, not necessarily violent uh, but it's detailed graphic horror imagery is um, creepy to say the least it's creepy uh, there's a lot of kind of subliminal messages within the movie um, the the demon that is in the movie um, Pazuzu um which you can Google. And there's an article on Wikipedia about Pazuzu. Um, that's the demon that possesses Reagan, who's played by Linda Blair, a very young Linda Blair. Um, I think she was only 12 or 13 in the movie. Um, 
and it's from from the original scene when she first gets uh, possessed, where she's being thrown around on the bed, um, and she's screaming and stuff. From that scene till the very end, I think that's an hour, an hour and fifteen minutes of um, kind of like a, a emotional. It's an emotional roller coaster for the the viewer. Um, there's some really frightening imagery, some subliminal messaging um, throughout the movie that kind of hints at something worse to come. Um, it's it, it's a really good movie. I'm trying to think of a movie that would would top it in terms of like atmosphere, um, uh, or even just visceral content. Um, I don't think anything comes close to us. A lot of people say The Shining. But I think The Shining is laughable. Um, the Shining doesn't scare me. I, I don't even think The Shining is particularly creepy. Um, to me, it's funny, The, the, the Shining. Um, it's unintentionally funny. Uh, there's nothing about The Shining that would, would scare me or make me kind of feel anything. Whereas The Exorcist kind of made me feel something and made me think and reflect on what is essentially a story about good and evil uh, right and wrong uh, morality um, sexuality um, there's a lot of themes in the movie and it's very it's, it's it very intelligently done it's masterfully crafted by Friedkin um, it, 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 I don't know many people who haven't seen it now but I'll still put a link in the description for the movie. Um, so you can have a watch whenever you want. Um, it's certainly... I've, I, the first time I saw it was uh, 10 years ago. I was 15, 16. And, uh, man, it still creeps me out to this day. Some of the imagery in it. Um, fantastic movie. Look, 10 out of 10 for that one. It doesn't get better than that, in my opinion. Not yet, anyway. Um, I'm not a massive fan of all the other Exorcism movies out there. Um, there was The Exorcist 2, The Heretic, uh, The Exorcist 3, uh, Exorcist Legion, uh, Exorcism of Emily Rose. Um, not a massive fan of them. I think a lot of them now, after seeing the first Exorcist, a lot of them are trying to capture something which was only captured once back in 1973 by Friedkin. Um, I think a lot of the other exorcism movies are kind of laughable. Um, but anyway, that's it. Look, I'm done. <laughs>